Recently, I decided to start a new series called Jumbo Games. Each video in this series is about making a specific game. In this video, I will show you how this game is made. Upon ChatGPT's friendly request, I called the game the Midnight Eclipse. The idea of the game is to win a car race. The game is packed with a lot of awesome features. It has super realistic physics, very realistic car speeds, and most importantly, you are raising a super intelligent AI. <laughs> you serious? You start in this menu, and from the many options presented on the screen, choose the option you like. I will choose the play option. You may need to wait for the game to load. Eventually, the game should start. Inside the game, you can pause in case you want to exit to the main menu. I tried the game using the Forward Plus renderer and the Compatibility renderer. The Forward Plus version looked very nice. The Compatibility version looked a bit bleached compared to the Forward Plus version. That's mainly because Glow and Shadows are not supported yet. I wanted the game to be playable in web browsers since this is way more approachable for most people so compatibility is the way to go in this case. Okay, now let's break down how the game is made. For the game assets, we have this car, the buildings, the street, and the walls. All of the models were made in Blender. There are also few images used in the game. This image is used as the background of the main menu. These two images are used in the mini-map. The checkpoints are also built using images. When it was time to work on the car controls, the car violently rejected my offer. It was a car catastrophe. But in the end, I added the following code that allowed the car to move forward and backward, steer and brake using the space button. The next task was to make the camera follow the car. The easiest way to make the camera follow the car is to make the camera a child of the car. But this feels like the car is holding a selfie stick. That's because the camera's movement is quite rigid this way. Essentially, the camera rotation needs to be much smoother. Here is one way to implement smoother camera rotation. We can assume that there is a vector pointing in the look direction of the camera. We also have a vector which is mostly pointing forward relative to the car's direction. When the car takes a turn, we can smoothly rotate the camera's direction towards the car's direction. The camera's direction vector represents the z-axis for the camera. With a little bit of math, we can get the other two axes which are perpendicular to this vector. Overall, I would say the controls feel great. Now, it was time to set the world boundaries. First, I added the world floor. This is the area the car moves on. And I added a ceiling to prevent the car from flying away. I also added collision shapes around the two walls surrounding the street. If you run very quickly and hit the wall, the car is yeeted into another dimension. After some thorough research, I came up with the conclusion that this is not how physics works. This issue is known as tunneling. To fix that, I had to tweak the margin of the collision shapes. With these boundaries in place, the player is constrained to stay on the street. To implement the movement of the enemy car, I used a checkpoint system. The idea is to set one checkpoint as the target for the car. The engine calculates the path to this checkpoint and the car moves along this path. When the enemy reaches that checkpoint, the target is updated to be the next checkpoint. This process keeps repeating until the enemy finishes the 5 laps. To make the game's main menu, I used the main image of the game and I added a button on top of it. When the button is clicked, the game switches to the main level scene. When we switch from the main menu to the main level, the game appears to be frozen. Putting the computer beside the heater didn't fix the problem. So I had to implement a loading screen. Here is one way to make a loading screen. When the scene is about to be changed, I set a global variable to the name of the new scene I want to switch to. Then I switch to a light temporary scene that loads the new scene in the background 
and shows the progress of this task. Once the new scene is loaded, we switch to it. This is the code in the light scene that loads the new scene in the background. This has been Jumbo Game number 1. You will find the link in the description if you want to try the game. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.